All right, welcome back. And this for the home run for the next, um, where's my time? All right, for the next uh, 40, 40 minutes or thereabout, we're going to have discussions on the International Day of Elimination of Violence Against Women. And this begins the 14th day of activism, which is going to head towards um, December 10, which is International uh, Human Rights Day. No better way to start up uh, with the female gender because that's where the entire problem lies. The neglect has led to all of the developmental indices problems we face, uh, according to uh, Ruchmi Sankori, my uh, senior colleague on radio. We talk about this oftentimes, and I've uh, been doing the advocacy on this uh, for many years now, looking at how to improve those numbers with women, especially in developing countries like Nigeria, where people don't seem to understand the numbers directly correlate uh, with the problems we face. Bukola Lamid is here with us, a mental health practitioner. Great to have you join us. And Thank great you. to reunite with uh, Bukola because Thank you. I haven't seen her in years. <laughs> and um, we went to University of Technology and we've ended up in different fields. Me, I'm in the, what do you call this, uh, Missy? Like your broadcaster, your journalist. Okay. So we ended up in the are. science. I still end up in the science. <laughs> away from uh, <laughs> uh, good, to hear, good to have you here today. You, and uh, good to have you help paint the picture. Yeah. I'd say we celebrate, but even though sometimes the, 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 the reality is sobering yeah. when you think about the realities faced by many women in this country, mm. whether they're in the urban areas or in the rural areas, yeah. it's a dire situation they face. But let's get you opening. Okay, so this morning um, before I came in, into the studio, I was having a conversation with a friend and I said, when I was looking at the statistics and I said, yeah. One in every three girls mm. we experience violence, mm. either domestic violence, child sexual abuse, before they turn 18. Mm. That is a huge statistic. And a lot of things surround the statistics. Okay. And that is why a lot of advocacy is ongoing. It's not only today. It's not only about the 10 days um, gender based violence, humanitarian, human, no, it's about every day, it's about the conscious effort of putting information across to people every minute, every second, because mm -hmm. you see, these things happen subliminally, mm -hmm. you know, it happens in the way you talk to people. Let me quickly give you an, um, an example. Yesterday right. I was driving and there was um, a hold up, very terrible one, and because of the job I, I needed to have um, a session with someone mm -hmm. in the next 20 minutes, mm -hmm. and the road is like five minutes to get there, mm -hmm. but because of the hold up, you know, so I had to um, talk to one of the military uh, personnel mm -hmm. that was directing the traffic. I brought up my ID. I said, I'm a mental health official. I need to get somewhere. Please just direct me. Actually, where I'm going to, there's really no hold up. But because of a roundabout, mm -hmm. and if it had helped me to just push in, push out a few cars, I would have just gone my way. So I, I spoke with him. And the first thing he said is, Madam, Madam, are you married? Are you married? And I was confused. I said, marriage? He said, if, I said, so I said, no. I just wanted to see his reaction. I said, no wonder. If you marry, you're not going to talk to a man like that. Wow. And I was <laughs> shocked. And you see, those are the subliminal way mm -hmm. of putting these things across that one gender is less, mm -hmm. you know, than the other, mm -hmm. or you're not supposed to pick, speak out. And why, and this is one of the reasons why a lot of women or girls don't speak out because people don't even want to hear them. Mm. People don't believe them. People shut them down. Yeah. Somebody is joining say, now woman. You know, those kind of little, little mm. things yeah. makes this demeaning approach to the one gender over the other. Mm. So that's why we are trying to push out a lot of information advocacy okay. that you see nobody's looking for um, equality so to speak, we're looking for equity. What you can get, I should get, regardless of the gender. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the same brain. As a mental health official or a professional, I understand that the brain is not different. The brain of a male is not different from the brain of a female. Mm -hmm. What you can carry, a female can carry it. And in fact, there's a research that even says that the brain of a female has enough extra capacity to carry things more than the brain of the male. And this is culturally specific because, you know, there's a lot of um, backload on women. You mm. do chores, you do so. They expand the brain of the women even more than the men. So why, why am I saying all this? Just to let people know that mm. it is just the genitals, so to speak, that is different. Then the way you have to accord 
a male. It's the way you are called a female. I said it is a human thing. It's not a gender thing. It has nothing to do with gender. Mm. And we have to start these things from grassroots. Mm. So in my own uh, organization, we go as far as going into the communities, going to schools, because we understand that family is a first nation. All right. So if you take care of the family, if you speak with people in the family, then you would have larger opportunity to impress, give this impression about what um, equity mm -hmm. or um, balance in humanity is all about. Because it starts from there. Abukola, thank you very much for pointing out that. But I want you to specify, because um, not everybody understands what violence, okay. I'll put the quotation around violence okay. is against women. Some people might just think it's about hitting a woman or using a stick on her head. So can you specify from the subtle to the very obvious what violence against women is? All right, so naturally, it's been given to us that we all have freedom to expression, yeah. freedom of speech. If I is, is part of the sustainable development goals oh. that we have. And it is a fundamental human right. Mm -hmm. So what is violence in, in its simplicity? It means that when you go against a person's fundamental human rights, so if you don't allow someone to express himself, if you don't allow somebody to have self-worth, self-respect, you're vandalizing in court the person's human rights. And um, those things are the things that, you know, immerse and makes it more grandiose, so to speak. Because, you know, when you keep shutting someone down, you keep shutting the person down, believing that the person don't have a say. You, are, you know, you are stripping, mentally, you are stripping of their self-esteem. And fundamentally, you are taking their rights away from them. So it is as, it's as mundane as not allowing somebody to express themselves or not allowing equal opportunities at all strata or at all platforms mm. of social life, mm. you know, talk about education, talk about um, um, marriage, talk about relationship at work, right. you know, there are a lot of things, like I gave an example, somebody will say there's a way a woman drives, like different from a man, I mean, driving is driving, they didn't teach a woman differently than a man, you know, so all those little things, they go all the way, especially even in school, a teacher was telling me, about um, 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 her students, right. young children, I think they're in basic one. And right. the teacher was asking the girls and the boys, okay, you girl, what do you want to become? Right. And she said, oh, I want to become a governor. And one, one of the boys in the classroom said, oh, no, that's for boys, mm. you know? And I love the girl's response. She said, oh, okay, don't worry, I'll become a president. Right. And I like when I heard that statement, I was, I said, yes, this is it. <laughs> you know, so it starts from those little things, house chores. Mm. For example, I tell people when I go for my seminars and training, I say, most of these domestic chores are survival skills. They're not gender-based. Somebody created it to become a gender-based, mm. okay? So they're survival skills. If you have the ability and the capability to eat, you must have the capacity to cook. It has nothing to do with whether you're a male or female, because human beings eat. Human beings cook, you know. Yeah. So those Absolutely. are as you know, as as little as it can be. Mm. You know, you 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 focus more. I was asking a mother. I said, if you want to send someone to the kitchen, you have two children, a boy and a girl, and you want to pick something from the kitchen. Subconsciously, who do you send? You know. And she says, a girl. I said, that is part of the problem because you, you shouldn't, you should bypass that consciousness. I say, anybody should be able to go to the kitchen. Right. So it's right. as mundane as that. All right, Absolutely. Buki. We'll, Bukola, we'll, keep, we'll keep you on the pause here. Let's cross over to Port Accurat where we have um, two guests joining the discussion this morning. Hilda Desmond uh, Hikari is uh, coordinator of African Women Lawyers Association. Thank you for joining us uh, this morning. And Adata Briggs. Also, thank you for joining us uh, this morning. I understand both of you are uh, in Port Harcourt. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Good morning. E excellent. Um, so let, let's begin with Hilda, and then uh, that I will join in later on. I, I guess uh, when we, the camera can pan towards her later on. But in, in Lagos here, uh, Bukola has been giving us um, the picture of what it is like uh, majorly in Lagos and the work uh, that's been done in um, ending this menace we deal with, uh, menace that even uh, became a shadow pandemic during the coronavirus and the lockdown because of the numbers of women in bars and the uh, skyrocketed as they were abused physically and sexually and um, still a matter uh, we continue to ponder over. But 
Tell me something uh, in, in River State. Uh, what's the story like? Uh, are there any positives, uh, like we've seen in Lagos in some respect, or have we seen more negatives? Uh, I guess that's, that's uh, is this? I, I think we have a data now. Is a data now, data? Hilda? Yes. Okay, let, let's speak with, let's speak with, uh, let's speak with Hilda first then. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much, Hilda. Thank you very much. Please, please go ahead. Pardon? Right. Okay. So we have Hilda and Adata. Uh, so we'll just figure out who is who. So Hilda, Hilda, please go ahead and let's hear what you have to say about um, the fight uh, against the uh, violence against women in um, River State. Okay. Today marks the beginning of the International Day for the Elimination of Violence of the International Day for Elimination of Violence Against Women. It's actually uh, uh, kickstarts the 16 days activism to end gender based against gender gender based violence. It starts today and ends on the tenth day of December which is the Human Rights Day. This International Day is actually marked out to bring to fore the issue of gender gender violence, which is endemic in our society. All right, looks like we have um just some technical glitch while we fix that, we'll get um, back to Hilda. But is Hadata, if Hadata is um, with us, Hadata, talk to us about how far so far in Port Harcourt, um, what is the result like? Is it any better than it used to be when it comes to eliminating violence against the girl child and also women? improvement because we've been having a series of complaints we'll get more reports more women are opening up to talking about it coming to our center the feeder center to talk about being violated and we have more um what would i call them people that have volunteered to report you have neighbors coming in to report about violence perpetrated against their neighbors children and all that so the report has been there's be there's more awareness that this thing is not is a crime and more people are open to talking about violence against women in river states generally where do you see most of this violence from is it from the urban concentration or from the rural areas or a mix of a mixture of both it's a mixture of both it happens both in the rural area in urban cities, everywhere. It happens everywhere. We have complaints from everywhere. We even get from the schools, from the universities. We have incidences where um, students have reported. We have, there's no way. We have in primary schools, nursery schools, secondary schools, universities, villages. The reports come in daily. They come in daily. So you can't actually say it's uh, community-based, it's rural-based, or it's city-based. It's a widespread thing. It's spread across uh, social strata also. You won't say something that happens with just the poor. We have poor people coming to report. You have those that are the middle class, upper class coming to report. So it's a widespread situation. Hmm. Um, I, I see Buki in the studio here nodding her head when Hadata was talking about um, where um, the concentration of this um, violence is coming from. Uh, would you agree, you agree with her? Or is it different here in Lagos? Well, I absolutely agree with her. So I would say it's a human thing, regardless of the um, environment, the community that you find them. Once you have a man and woman, children, boys, girls, mm. you would find domestic violence. You would find child sexual abuse. You would find all forms of violence against women. Mm. In fact, during the um, lockdown, I, I, I even locked down myself because it got to a point where sometimes in a day, I get reports up to like five 
reports every day, people calling me, people having issues, you know, because the lockdown actually brought about people knowing, getting to know their spouses or their partner or their children and the incompatibility, you know, that they have. Mm. So at that time, there was a lot of, and you know, there are a lot of psychological breakdown as well. People are having cabin fever. People are at home sitting down doing nothing and they were looking at where they can transfer the aggression. And at least, I mean, the next person you transfer the aggression is to someone who you think, you know, you are above. So it, it became a very, it became a pandemic during the lockdown in its own. So regardless of wherever the person is, the violence remains the same, urban, city, wherever, even at work. Mm. It's everywhere. And this comes from a belief system, mm. the way we see things, the way we look at ourselves and we look at others. And that is one of the things that we try to debunk from the family. Because like I told you from before, if we focus more on the family, then you will not see, because everybody is a first a family person before mm. you have that status as a manager, as a teacher, whatever you are. So once you're able to have the understanding from the home front, you'll be able to change or influence the dynamics of how you perceive other people mm. in, in the larger community. So uh, absolutely. Family, family is very, very key. Absolutely. De dealing with uh, stereotypes uh, is crucial in... Um, and in elimination of violence against women. Let's Absolutely. cross over to uh, Chinon Akbono, who is uh, coordinating manager Freedom uh, Foundation, joins us via Zoom. Uh, hello, Chinon. So great to have you join us. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for having me on the show. Okay. Um, I was hoping, it looks like we don't have Chin Onto's visual yet, but um, do, do, we have, do we have Chin Onto up there now? Okay, we'll, we'll, try, we'll try and fix, up, fix the picture or with Chin Onto there and then we can um, have um, some connection. But let's get back to, um, if we have um, Hilda back up now, if the connection has been fixed, uh, can we speak with Hilda? All right, we don't have Hilda also too. So um, a data, all right, I understand a data. So we'll, we'll fix the connection with all the other okay. resource persons as quickly as possible so we can have uh, a full house. But a data, so while we're comparing notes uh, okay. across um, different boards, it appears that uh, there's a common thread here, especially where women are being um, yep. targeted uh, for abuse, whether it's sexual, yes. uh, emotional, or um, physical abuse like we've seen. If you go across several metros, the section in the dailies, you probably haven't begun to read yet if you don't see a story of rape or abuse and all of that. And uh, pandemic, uh, Bukola talks about in those sort of proportions. But um, people speaking out against, sex, against violence against women has changed, has risen over the years. I, I remember the past, it was such a taboo subject. People didn't talk about it even within the family uh, circle where it was prevalent then. But uh, over the years, uh, because of social media, I, can, I, I think mainly, uh, has led to reports happening. We've seen a number of states also um, stiffen the penalties for offenders uh, for, for uh, violence against women. But has that in any way helped in your perspective significantly or you think it's still too slow for comfort? It's actually still too slow for comfort. Because, yes, um, laws have been passed. We have the uh, law has been passed by the National and uh, the River State House of Assembly right now here in River State, but the governor has not assented to it. We have series of laws, but these laws are all been in existence for a while. They have been there, and these things are still being done. We have the issues of enforcement. It's not just having a law, you have a law, but how do you enforce the law? We have a law against female genital mutilation. But we still have we still have cases of F, uh, female genital mutilation going on. We have laws that say, oh, you cannot discriminate against um, widows and widowers and all that. But these things still happen. Communities still say, oh, you you cannot um, you cannot bury your husband because you must swear an oath. You can't do this. You can't do that. There are a lot of things happening. There are laws against them. We have laws. Even our constitution, which is our grown norm, says there should be no discrimination against anybody on basis of sex, gender, uh, family orientation, or whatever. But 
is still ongoing. It's something that is it has eaten deep into us, caused by patriarchy. Our system, our system of patriarchy, patriarchy has eaten deep into our system. We have patriarchy in every strata of life in Nigeria. In the fact, even in our laws, it's exhibited in our laws. Uh, there are laws that say, oh, a woman can't, like the police, a woman can't, uh, okay, now, okay, it's been amended, I hear. Not so previously, they used to say a woman can't uh, marry without permissions and all sorts. We have sorts, all sorts of things against women. The patriarchy has really eaten deep. They say, oh, we should have 35% affirmative action. Where has that been done? It's not been done. There are too many issues, too many outstanding issues about uh, discrimination against women, violence against women. You go to the police station to report, they tell you it's a domestic affair. And we all know there are laws. The criminal code, the VAP Act, all says you can't do this. But you go there and you don't get any help. So what are we talking about? The enforcements are not there. Nobody's enforcing the law. We have laws. Laws are passed every day, but nobody enforces it. And when there's no enforcement, it continues. When everybody says, oh, this has happened. How many judgments have we gotten? How many, how many uh, perpetrators have been actually sentenced the laws are there but it's not being enforced well these are really issues and they need to be discussed thrashed and acted upon we'll go on a short break and when we come back news of continues stay with us Breaking news stories, insightful documentaries, news reports from around the globe, and original news content. Now available 24 hours daily on Star Times Channel 109. Stream live on YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash Silverbird N24 Live. Follow on Facebook at Silverbird News 24, on Twitter at Silverbird N24, and on Instagram at Silverbird N24. Silverbird News 24, the news never stops. For more news stories, kindly visit our website www.silverbednews24.com. You can also watch trending news videos on our YouTube channel. We are just a click away on WhatsApp, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Get the news in your prime on your mobile phone by downloading Silverbed News 24 from your Play or App Store. File in your witness report on our website or send an email to silverbedn24 at gmail.com. Glad to know you're still there. If you're just turning in, this is News Hub. And uh, we, before we went on the break, we were speaking with uh, advocates on the elimination of violence against a girl, child, and women. And moving on with the conversation, uh, we have joining us also virtually Chinom So um, Akono, coordinating manager, um, Freedom Foundation. And we will be um, moving further on the matter. Chinam, so great to join us uh, on um, News Up. 
Hello, good morning. Thank you for having me. Um, Absolutely. Um, I want to say, uh, I dare say you came late to the party, but we'll just move on from there. And I want to ask, the issue of patriarchy, which um, Hadata mentioned earlier on, the a charity begins at home. A boy is first a boy before he becomes a man. Um, is there um, anything that is being done to ensure that the bold child does not grow up thinking in the patriarchy perspective? Right. Uh, thank you very much for having me on the show. And I heard uh, on the show, and I think that as an organization, all we're pushing at Freedom Foundation is education, re-education of the boy child and re-education or resensitization of the parents, of our parents, so that in the, for the next generation, we're able to bring up the boy child in such a way that he doesn't look down on the female Parents need to understand that the boy child and the female child and the girl child, they are equal. You know, there's no preference of one gender over the other. So it's a sensitization that has to begin. Remember that the family is at the root of the society. The family is the, is the unit that actually brings up individuals and prepares them for the larger world, which is the society. So we are taking advocacy. It's time for us to take advocacy to the family unit, to the churches, you know, even to the mosque, let's go back to those organizations that actually bring up indiv individuals and prepares them for the, for, for the larger world of society. So parents need to understand that in your home, we have to create equal opportunities for the boy child and the girl child. The boy child, there's nowhere, there's no rule of law, and there's no, it's not written anywhere for, the, for chores, domestic chores to be done by, you know, the, the females alone. And we also should... You know, the thing about just bringing up a girl child and preparing her solely for marriage, you know, that's one thing that we also need to just take out of our, our, our mentality and re-educate ourselves. The boy child is also going to get married. The, 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 the objective or the sole purpose of a female is not just to come to the world and, you know, pre um, work on chores and get married. That's not a goal. You know, so it's time for it. Basically, we just all have to re-educate ourselves, even to the police, to, to all individuals, because it's something that's trickled down, you know, all the way, even to government offices, to, to corporate organizations. You find that there's that distinction between the male and the female. So by the time we educate ourselves, we can now make some sort of progress. Thank you very much, uh, Chinon. So uh, now, now that we have connection also too with uh, Hilda Desmond Hikari, who is a coordinator of African Women Lawyers Association and River State. Uh, great to have you, Hilda, join us. And um, sorry for this connection the, the, the other time. I'm sure we can. Uh, uh, oh, I understand, unfortunately, we don't have uh, the connection with Hilda anymore. But uh, we'll, we'll, get, we'll, get back, uh, we'll get back to you. But um, let, me, let me see with Bukola in, in Lagos here. Uh, something uh, Chin also talked about, which I think is very important, the re-education of the boy child, but also very importantly, so that we don't miss the mark, uh, the numbers of, of, uh, of girls who are not in school, because there's increasing evidence to suggest that when you have more children, girl ch children in school, the chances that it will be abused is, will drop significantly. Uh, more, the, more, the more hours or years the child spends, uh, spends in school, the less opportunity the child will be preyed on. Unfortunately, um, the discrimination begins even from the girls not even getting education. Many of Wahala in the northern part of the country and in some states in the, in the south, surprisingly, people don't realize that. Uh, uh, some states in the south also have the sort of problems where uh, discrimination against the girl child's education is prevalent. Um, they call them um, uh, 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 child marriages, which I strongly and vehemently um, <laughs> disregard. This is in the first unions. Mm. I mean, the, ch the child has, hasn't had the opportunity to exercise her right yet, and then they go and join her with an adult and say uh, it's a uh, marriage. But, Help, help us understand also, too, in terms of the education, because I think this is really a big problem. Uh, people celebrate and they have a boy child and they say, yeah, it's a boy, because they want to train that one and become the CEO of the family. Whereas a child, a girl, like um, Chinonto says, prepared for marriage, which is simply atrocious. So, like uh, we were saying the other time, I think mm -hmm. it's a belief system thing. Mm -hmm. It's a mindset, it's a narrative that has, you know, been happening over the years, over and over and over. Mm. So like I said, these things happen subliminally. You just mm. hear your mother says, oh, you better learn how to cook. If you get married now, 
how are you going to cook for your husband? Mm. So that sends a peculiar message to the woman, saying that you are made for the other gender. You are not made for yourself. So you find a lot of girls growing up, becoming a woman, and they cannot find themselves because mm. they must find an they must find an external validation from somebody before they can identify themselves. Mm. So this thing started from when they were actually young. Is as mundane as telling a particular gender to do a particular chore, that a particular chore is for a particular gender. Mm. And talking about education as well, I have met a lot of parents, because I go outside Lagos to do advocacy and all that, right. so I've met a particular man who told me that was the essence of sending her, she, he has um, five daughters mm. and one son, so he's only sending the boy to school. Wow. So when we're trying to get information and he said it's, waste, it's a wasted effort or a wasted investment because at the end of the day, this girl child is going to change her name and, you know, she's not going to bear his own name again and everything that he has invested goes to the man who marries her. So that kind of mentality, you know, goes a long way. I have seen a man who had issues with um, his daughter. When uh, the daughter was graduating out of the university, she was already married. So there was this argument that the uh, is, is his name that should be on the certificate, not the husband's name. You know, all these kind of things, what does it matter? What is the name about? And it, were we not even the one that told the women to change their names? You know, there is a conflict in all this uh, mindset narrative that is surrounding education. That's one of the major reasons why you see a lot of people or a lot of families, they don't want to really put much effort or much concentration on the girl child because they after all, you go and start cooking in one kitchen. That's a mentality, and these are the realities that we face. But like I say, in my own organization, we deal more on preventive measures. Mm. We make you see things ahead so that you would have the choice if you want to go ahead or you want to change your narrative. Mm. So we talk about child sexual abuse, talk about physical abuse, talk about all those things that are so burden us as a family. Mm. Because like she said, to a large extent, we may not be able to change the narrative for the older ones, mm. okay? Because the brain stops developing, the brain develops fully at the age of 25. Mm. So what you can do at that is to just do damage control. But we understand neuroplasticity in mental health, that you can still change patterns, you can still change narratives when a child is still growing up. So we're so passionate about changing the narratives for children, you know, encouraging parents to focus on both gender and we have to be careful here because i was having a conversation mm. with someone and i said please don't let us put much more um emphasis on the girls or the women mm. let us balance it out because when you over in quote over empower a woman it becomes a burden to the men as well absolutely and we are seeing this ripple effect even in families now a lot of um issues that we're having reports we are having in um, marriages now we are seeing that women are even more empowered more than the men and it's even causing a lot of rancor and issues they find women in the forefront taking the seemingly what we call the men's responsibility so the men are not even taking it lightly so we need to still educate the men or the boys so that there will be a, a balance in the information that we are sending across to family so we are not saying that women should be better than men or men should be better than women so we should find a balance we should strike a balance when we are doing this education all right Buki, um balancing the situation is very important changing the narrative as well is important like you said yeah. um speaking of changing narrative some people would say um, it may be my business, according to what, you know, local parlance, it's, it's in the families, only the affected families that are, you know, that are the ones that are pushing for this thing. We need to look at this thing wholesomely. And if, if, any, if there's anyone um, in, in our Port Harcourt studios, Hilda uh, Chinamsu or Hadata, um, that is online, Hilda, okay, yes, Hilda, um, if you are there, Talk to us about what the nation stands to lose mm -hmm. if we keep allowing violence against the girl child and the women persist. Because this has to move beyond the affected families to everybody. Because they say, I will have to speak Pigeon now, if everybody took out for the matter, we could get solution to the problem, right? So talk to us, what your thoughts about that? Yes, I agree with you that if everybody responds, that uh, there will be a solution 
And I want to say that uh, the religious leaders, they have a lot of role to play. Because they are influencers. A lot of people believe in what they say. And they are character molders and changers. So if they can use their toolkits to, to change the narrative by making the men in their congregation on the Um, okay, we seem to have lost connection with Hilda, but if we have Chinamso um, or Hadata, I'd like you to uh, respond to or react to that. Hadata? All right, Chinamso, if you're there, please respond to how much the nation has to lose if we keep allowing um, this atrocity persist. Well, um, I'll say that as much um, as much as yes, we have um, the male and the female gender. I, there was a quote I saw earlier this week that says that the woman has a stronger moral courage okay. than the man. Yeah, so yeah. we have to be um, just yeah, careful yeah. because we know that this, we need the strength of the woman. We yes. need we need we need to support her even in the nation at the, at the core of the family unit at the core of the society the strength of the woman is required and so by by not speaking at all to the um subject of abuse we crush the spirit of the woman and for us to have a society where you know we bring up children we have children we 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 need the support of everyone you know to ensure that um um we uh, the the pillars of our society or the values of the society are deeply rooted, you know, in us as, as individuals. We have to, it's something we have to speak up to. We can't we can't be quiet. It's not an issue that affects one person or you know just affects a particular group of people or class of class in society. So we all have a responsibility to to to, to play the family, the government. We have to work with government, private organizations because I mean, gender-based violence is also very much prevalent in our workplaces. You know, you see that sometimes a woman who deserves promotion after putting in a lot of work, she's denied promotion either because she refuses to um, accept the advances of a boss. You know, I've been in situations where I, I've, you know, I've, ha I've had experiences with bosses who have made advances at me. And just because of my refusal, I was my opportunity at work, you know, for promotion was actually now limited. So it's something that we all have to speak towards to. It's something that if we don't, if we don't lend our voices to, it's going to affect us, even business-wise, even in 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 this. Apart from just in the society, even it, it affects even us financially, economically. You know, it's something that we all have to you know lend our voices. And I'm really thankful that the UN is pushing the conversation on on funding, um, responding, um, collecting data. You know, because one of the challenges that we also have in our society is our ability to collect data. So if we if we're able to build a solid, a much more solid data system, we're able to track our progress and we're able to respond, you know, to these cases of violence, either by providing justice, either by also strengthening the mental health services that we have available to provide support for victims of um, gender based based um, violence. Thank you very much. Um, uh, back to the studio with um, uh, Bukola Lamida. This, this um, big issue we're having is uh, uh, massive, and, and I'm sure that um, the days of activism will provide us the opportunity we can talk about this all over <coughs> again because there's so many angles on touch yet. Uh, we can only barely, uh, sorry about that, we can only barely um, scratch. <coughs> the... Let's get to Port Harcourt and, um, and get, get your viewpoints on what, you, what to make about what is going on with um, gender-based violence and, you know, a lot, a lot of stuff happening. Something she also talked about, which was funding and helping women, for example, who are in distress. The reason why many women have stayed in abusive relationships, whether it's at the workplace or, you know, it's, uh, oftentimes has been because they don't have uh, the funding to go ahead with, uh, say, for example, relocate or find a safe home or safe place to live in. So they stay in the abuse for several years. Um, Hilda, what's the way out? Um, what, 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 sort of, what sort of opportunity, what sort of um, avenues and windows are open for people to get involved uh, in this one, Hilda? We've got barely uh, a minute, uh, unfortunately, but we're going to get you back so that we can have some more discussion with you, uh, Hilda.
All right, uh, can you unmute uh, the device you're, you, you're working with so that we can hear you? I say presently, Ola is, has a project to build a shelter. It's already ongoing for abused women so that abused women can leave their environment. Most times, abuse continue and most women endure because they don't have any place to go to. In such a, a shelter, women will be provided with temp uh, necessities of life that will enable them to carry on. We're also encouraging the government to build a shelter, a home, a temporary shelter for women so that any woman that is abused can leave that environment. Because we find out that most times when they stay in that environment, they end up being killed or, or continue to endure what ordinarily they won't even uh, endure. The government should also provide you know, avenues for people who suffer abuse. Especially women suffer abuse in the workplace. And the ILO, they have started doing something towards that. All the governments all over the world, they should be able to do something so that women who suffer abuse in the in sexual abuse, especially in the workplace, will have remedial systems where they will be able to uh, report and measures will be taken to curb that trend. So a lot of work still needs to be done because if people have avenues where if they speak up, like when you go to police most times, you find out that most of the issues you report pertaining to violence, if it's domestic violence, they tell you it's a, it's a domestic matter, you should go home. If it has to do with sexual issues they, at the workplace, they deal with it with uh, levity. But if a special place in the police is funded to, well, this is actually funded to take care of this situation, it will go a long way towards uh, stemming the tide right. of uh, both sexual abuse and physical violence on the women folk. All right, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure speaking with you, uh, Hilda Desmond Hikairi, uh, who is a coordinator of African Women Lawyers uh, Association. Thank you very much. All right, also thank you very much, uh, Data okay. Bill Briggs, uh, who is with FIDA. It's been great speaking with you also, too. We hope we can get uh, everyone on board uh, to talk some more. How time flies when you're having a big uh, discussion at Data. Thank you very much. And also thank you very much. Um, Thank you very much, Chinon Suakbono. Uh, thank you, always a pleasure. If you find time, studios are always open for you uh, to come have a talk with us. And same with you, Bukola Alamid, mental health practitioner. It's a ple pleasure speaking with you and reuniting with you also. So thank you very much. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. It's a very key issue that we're discussing here today, and I right. wish we move on from here and act on it, every right. one of us. Right. So the way the cookie crumbles, we say, we've had big discussions today, everything we talked about, you can continue discussing with us online, our social media handles right there at the bottom of the screen. Like, subscribe, comment, follow us. Uh, we are ready to hear from you always because the conversation continues. Absolutely. The conversation continues after here. All right. From... Mercy Frank, don't call me Mercy Frank anymore, please. That's, I want to tag that violence against women, please. Uh, good one. <laughs> All right, I'm Aogo Obo. Do have a great day. Hasta luego, eh? Bye. Esta bonita.